Okay, so we have a chaotic good male lightfoot halfling that we've been getting into here. Oh, what do we need to do next? Yeah, which what level is our character? Let's roll it on a percentile. 19. Oh, our first not not super high uh, character. Level 6. Okay. As we continue down the flow chart here, let's determine he's going to get one stat bump, ASI or ability score increase. Let's roll a percentile and see if that's going to go into a feat or not. 39, nope. So we're going to go for a pure stat bump with this character. Next, we're going to change this down here to a 13 and hit roll for the background. 7. We have a hermit. And there are types of hermits. There's a D8. We're going to roll 1D8 for which type of hermit he is. A 3. And now we need to generate two personality traits and then an ideal, a bond, and a flaw. This is going to become 2D8. This is going to become 3D6. Roll it. 3 and a 2. Und then we roll the D6s. 3, 5, 4. Almost there. We need to determine on a D12, this big golden button here, what our character is, class-wise. A six. Monk. Ooh, Lightfoot Halflings make excellent monks. And which kind of monk is a D3? Two. Wave the four elements. There we go. Spicy Larry is now graduating from the plains, going on an adventure into the forest, so it'll be a little bit harder. Uh, yeah, no, no more XP for Dark Wolf, right? Uh, is it just a deer? No, it is a wolf pack that jumps out at Spicy Larry. You attack at disadvantage. Well, you know what? 12 plus 3 is 15. Spicy Larry puts down... Yeah, I'm sorry, Dark Wolf. Uh, they were probably just like mean old feral ones that needed to be trimmed anyway. Um, and so uh, Spicy Larry puts down the rabid wolves and earns 100 EXP. Now we're about finished with the random number generation. There's one, one more thing that we need to do. We have halflings right here. So we're going to take two feet, seven inches, and we're going to add to that 2d4 inches. We're adding three inches. So this is a two foot, 10 inch halfling. We're going to take the same number three and we're going to, well, multiply it by one pound, add it to 35, and he weighs in at a whopping 38 pounds. Now we're going to roll a percentile for where in his life cycle he is. 88, mm, pardon me. All right, he is an old halfling. And we do this to add to the character's flavor, their history, um, what is making them go out in adventure? Could it be a tiebreaker when deciding a power, a spell, something like that? And as we can see, old is column five. Boop, ba -da -da -da. And then we come over to halflings. Boop, ba -da -da -da. He's going to be between 156 and 200 years old, uh, which is going to be right here. We're going to roll a 45-sided die. Come down here. 45, hit it. 24. All right, so that's going to be 76, 180 years old. All right, so he should be in retirement or getting close to it, though he still has some uh, spring in his step, some life. He's going to go out on this adventure with our other characters. And we'll see maybe what he wants to do, where he's going. Hey, Derek, it's good to see you again. I'm doing very well, thank you. Cheers. It, it's tea, you know.
I hope you're feeling um, I hope you're feeling full of energy and uh, you're ready to get into some creative stuff and if you have any stories to share um, uh, from your own tabletop adventures since the last time uh, I know you're talking about you're running curse of Strahd uh, you just started that up and you had that kind of that cool idea about the witch and the scarecrows I'm glad you're feeling better you want that much tea Tycho well it doesn't take too much to brew it. Um, you know, if you want to do it hot, just get a measuring cup. Um, just get like a, a Pyrex glass measuring cup, you know, three, four cups, and drop in three or four, uh, drop in three or four tea bags, um, and then like super concentrate brew it. Like throw it in the microwave for like four minutes, and it'll like make a super concentrated brew. Uh, and then you can pour it in a pitcher. Uh, and if you pour it in a pitcher that's like full of ice, uh, not only will it instantly cool it, it'll start mixing and watering the concentration down a little bit. And then you just add in a little bit more water to equal like half tea, half water. And you have near instant iced tea if you want something unsweetened. Or you can just drop in a packet of crystal, uh, like a crystal light or some sort of a, a powdered uh, uh, mix like that. And make a pitcher even more instantly. What kind of story are you looking for? Well, if it's a story you have from a, a tale from your tabletop, otherwise the story that we're looking for is we just started making this character here. Um, we don't have too much meat on his bones, not that there's uh, that much to begin with. He's 38 pounds. Uh, but we're weaving this character into the three that we've made so far this week. Um, also, Tycho, was, was I able to... Um, was I able to help answer your question about this this character that you wanted to roll into? Um, you know, doing that itself isn't necessarily bad. It's just making sure that you're doing it in a way that really mojinates with your party. What do we got? Dark Wolf, I'm curious, did Thursday's group go in a different direction? No, they pretty well went in the in the direction that you guys went, Dark Wolf. Uh, they managed to get to the burial part, but that was just the next step ahead of you. Um, you did a little bit more investigating and in-person stuff. There was a couple things, because it's a larger group, that I, I had to kind of just go over or give to them, because there's, there's so many different skills that um, there was more, I guess, like sort of automatic stuff. So you two are pretty well in the same, um, you're, you're along the same path. Uh, and if you're curious, I'll write it up in the Discord under that tab. Yeah, it's always a difficult point, says Derek, but if you can do it and click with the party, it works out great. Oh yeah, for what Tycho's saying? Yeah, I think I'd rather maybe do a merchant that gives him something to interact with and journey alongside of. Maybe a shin-kicking rogue isn't so productive. Yeah, there's, uh, remember Tycho, uh, characters make good jokes, uh, uh, good jokes don't make good characters. So having a shin-kicking rogue, uh, rogue, aside from maybe an initial laugh, suddenly that's what he is. Uh, you know, is he going to be this one-dimensional character that just goes around and causes trouble for everyone and distracts from the story, gets the party in trouble, gets himself in trouble, uh, doing something like that. So think of a way that you can make a, a character that can still be maybe a trickster, uh, but there's a way to be productive about running the character. Uh, because you, you don't want to waste your time or your player's time. Um, yes, it's a group of friends getting together, and yeah, you're probably just eating pizza and jamming out. But ultimately, there's an unspoken social contract that you, there should be some kind of advancement. There should be some clues found out, maybe a combat, maybe a skill challenge, something along those lines. And then, you know, if you have a character on the side uh, that is, you know, you're, you're taking time away from the story to say he's going around and he's kicking shins or whatever. Again, you might get that initial laugh, but if that's all he's doing, then wh what is the point of him existing? Is it a click or a clique? Derek says, okay, short part of the game on Tuesday, my human, yeah, yeah, <laughs> human, um, is believed to be a noble. One of the PCs was slow to trust, threatened me, and the bugbear paladin, ooh, interesting, by, uh, 
by putting a bottle in our faces, badly illustrated with a skull and crossbones on it. My noble human sat down, looked at it, and decided uh, it's best to tip his hand a bit, and shot it back, completely unsure of what was in the bottle. Turned out it was nightshade extract. He licks his lips, tastes it, smiles, and brings the bottle back to the poisoner PC, saying he appreciated the gift. Oh, my attention is hooked. I, I definitely want to find out what was going on with that. Well, you all are storytelling here. I'm going to scroll down to Hermit and start filling in some details. I was exiled for a crime I didn't commit. All right. Well, we got to think then. Wrong place, wrong time. Kind of an Andy Dufresne from Shawshank. Also, what is the discovery that our hermit has made? So maybe he just got out of jail. Yeah, okay. Well, I can see where this is going. Tycho Boom. I could run a Tibet. A Tibet that acts like a complete... Uh, arse outside and inside cat form does really horrible cat things hairballs on the bed poo on the carpet uses things as scratching posts <laughs> well again what what is the point or the purpose of running this character Tycho like what uh, d don't just describe what the character is doing describe the why does the character exist? What do you want this character to accomplish in the in the story? Comedic relief, a source of information, um, a rival, a nuisance, um, an enemy. What? D d just don't say what the character does. Why? Why does the character exist? Why do you want this character to be in the story? Derek says, "Well, he's my example. I was talking about doing a CEPC." And a party and making it work in the dynamic of a party. Ah. Alright, so if he's a nuisance Tycho, so what... So being a nuisance character... Uh, being a nuisance character, what is he going to add to the story? A quiet seclusion to your extended hermitage gave you access to a unique and powerful discovery. The exact nature of this revelation depends on the nature of your seclusion. It might be a great truth about the cosmos, the deities, the powerful beings of the outer planes, or the forces of nature. It could be a sight that no one else has ever seen. You might have uncovered a fact that has long been forgotten, or unearthed some relic of the past that could rewrite history. DuckTales, woohoo! It might be information that would be damaging to the people who, or consigned you to exile, and hence the reason for your return to society. You work with your DM, yes. Discovery is definitely a very friendly DM background trait. It's powerful for the PC, too, but it's very good for the DM. Yeah, Bobic Bobicus had a bad uh, had a bad experience with uh, with poisoning. <laughs> The leader of my community had something wise to say on every topic, and I am eager to share that wisdom. And two, I am utterly serene, even in the face of disaster. Ooh. He probably learned something in jail, aside from hand-to-hand -hand combat. And um, as he ha as he got out now, he is going to pursue this knowledge that he learned while he was, uh, or he was exiled for a crime. So he wasn't necessarily in a prison, but so he was exiled from some place. Actually, he could have been. Uh, he's a Lightfoot halfling. Uh, he very well could have been exiled from... Well, what do we have? What do we have? Here we go. Lacuna. Which was Area 5. And there are, there are also halflings primarily stout in the Fallfire Plain. 
However, if we look at our picture, right, we're building we're building a world here. One, two, three, four, five. It's not really developed, but look, he could have been exiled from here. And so he sailed up. He was probably in Mesomasca for a little bit. And remember, he has to go by this dragon graveyard and all this other mysterious stuff. And then he ended up here in the north where he was exiled. Now, what crime did he supposedly commit? I don't know. We can come up with that really easily. Uh, ba booey Yeah, the Poisoner was happenstance, but it gave a chance to add that intrigue. I am playing a manipulator, and they are the and they are a Poisoner mute. He tipped his hand to challenge them, but now he has their attention, which means they now have a reason to focus on me, which means now the build-up can begin and exploring the dynamic. Uh, help us both get over. Yeah, but my Yanti is well aware of his immunity to poison, which is the connection he's counting on to gain favor with the Poisoner. Uh, let's just say expect a Princess Bride Sicilian <laughs> reference at some point. Awesome, Derek. <laughs> when you land that one, I'd, I'd really like to hear uh, how your if any of your players uh, ended up getting it and were laughing along. Tycho says, no idea at this point. I'm just bored running a solo campaign. Uh, there's just no one else to interact with. Everything is just his I want to be a necromancer story. And it's just so, I don't know, bland right now. I like running the campaign, but it'd be more interesting for me if it wasn't just for him. I think what I really want to do now is to play something, because I've been running without a break for a bit now. But my friend who I usually switch places with isn't around. Um, yeah, I've been all, built up an immunity. So, so I, I get what you're saying, Tycho. Though I would strongly urge you, don't fall into... Don't fall into the I'm bored, lol, random murder hobo. Um, sometimes uh, no gaming is better than bad gaming. Uh, it was brought up in the channel here, and I, I agree with that philosophy. If you need a break, just take a break. Whether it's completely away from D and D, you know, if, even if you need a break from this channel because it's it's just bringing back memories or it's stressful or something, but don't don't blow out of something that otherwise you would want to continue. Because if, let's say that you make this, this lol random character, well, your, is, is your friend going to appreciate that? And is your friend going to want to run under you in the future or around you? Is he going to say, oh man, watch out, Tycho, Tycho gets bored. And when Tycho gets bored running, uh, running a story, he just inserts, um, he inserts assassins and starts doing all this uh, crazy stuff. And all of a sudden, you've kind of poisoned your own reputation uh, in your group of friends or in your gaming community. Um, if you need to, just just talk to your friends straight up, Tycho. Say, look, I'm sorry. Um, I, I need a break. I, I appreciate you showing up and we're running this, this solo campaign. But I need, I need some time away or we need to go on a recruitment drive and find a couple friends at a local game store or something in order to teach or, you know, even if they're, they're long beards or gray beards or old beards, whatever you want to call them, tree beards. <laughs> um, and suddenly uh, you, you can grow your, your group without damaging your reputation or your storytelling. You'd probably laugh for a couple of minutes depending on what I do or how, but it'd probably get boring for both of us. I agree. It, it, it sounds like Tycho instead you you just it, just if it's not fun just stop playing you're not gonna hurt anyone's feelings especially each other's right if it's just the two of you it's a whole lot easier to to make a break like that than it would be if you were running for like five other friends and say I'm sorry guys and girls I, I'm just I'm not feeling it I'm I, I gotta step back so in this case Tycho just do it just just take a break recharge um, find inspiration in something else, try a new system, or honestly, just, I don't know, just do something different. Read some comics for a bit, catch up on some manga, uh, whatever, whatever it is you enjoy doing otherwise, just do it. Live life, get new ideas and experiences for later. You can always come back to D&D, but, but don't self-destruct and don't burn bridges. I've seen that happen. That is no good. Absolutely no good. So here, I'm Jacob Marley, and I'm here's my chains of the. Oh, don't be like me, Ebenezer. <laughs> um, not that I've done that, but I, I've I've reached uh, I've reached moments of of feeling burnt out, blown out, and I've seen players who just sort of, 
they they've lost investment in the game in the social nature of it and um you know they make stupid decisions and suddenly nothing is serious and one player can affect everyone else and you know do what you got to do Tycho but but don't implode don't explode don't burn out and and go from there you know you're always welcome here and we do talk about D&D &D. maybe it's a little bit different so you can keep your batteries uh you know charging uh, without, you know, exhausting yourself. Um, but even if you need a break from here, I totally understand. Uh, you gotta, you gotta take care of yourself. You can't take care of anyone else unless you've taken care of yourself, uh, Tycho. Uh, yep, Dark Wolf, good advice. Derek continues, there are some benefits to small groups or solo games. You will miss it, but for you to miss it, he needs to go away for a bit. Uh, might I throw a suggestion in the hat? Would, um, yeah, sure, I... I, you've been around long enough, Derek. You know the context and the expectations of the channel. You know, kind of the boundaries. Uh, they, they may be artificial lines in the sand, but you know the, the lines in the sand we operate in. Uh, would it be interesting as something different for you guys uh, for you to run a intro one-shot for players who need something? Uh, if you want to arrange that, Derek, you can f feel free to do so through... Um, Feel free to do so through uh, Discord, um, something along those lines. You can get a party together. The only thing I would ask, Derek, is um, keep in mind the audience, or, or rather, you know, if we're doing it through here, uh, I know you're a horror buff, um, but unless everyone is signing off uh, in your own group that you're running, like you're using this as the platform to organize, and that's perfectly fine, Um but if you, depending on how graphic or like how intense you want to run a vampire game, because it can get really intense, just bear in mind that the audience, uh, you know, on Twitch you only have to be 13 and up in order to to you know watch on Twitch and engage. And uh, unless you're checking IDs at the door, just bear that in mind if you wanted to run a sample. Otherwise, Derek, Derek, anyone out there, if you want to use uh, the community that's here and you want to expose people to other game systems than D and D. I'm fine with that. We talk D and D because it's a great medium. A lot of people understand it. It's a recognized brand. Um, but Vampire the Masquerade, Dark Heresy, Pathfinder, Seventh Sea. Uh, we have all the other World of Darkness uh, books that are out there. Um, <laughs> Made RPG. I actually have the the core rule book for uh, Made RPG. That's a very interesting one, by the way. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff out there. Yeah, no, th that's a great offer, Derek. If if there are those who want to pick it up and you can do it within, you know, the context of the channel or and uh, at least initially, and if the expectations of the players are there that they want something more, you know, dark and intense, as long as that's communicated ahead of time, um, then I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah, Bobby Kiss, we already organized a short game in Discord. It was really supposed to be a continuing game, but never followed up. Yeah, I, I was wondering about that, but hey, again, uh, consistency is the last boss of every RPG, Bobby Kiss. And, and games will come and go, DMs and players. We'll, we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see Dark Wolf. Um, you're curious about Maid? <laughs> Maybe I can show off my Maid RPG book uh, sometime on the channel. <laughs> I could try to interest him in Vampire, but it took forever, months and months, to teach him to play Dungeons & Dragons at just a basic level. Although for myself and my friend, Vampire's Upper Alley, we like horror and dark things, but I don't know if I could teach him Vampire. It's different from D&D &D and even slightly more complicated. Yeah, uh, well, you know what, Tycho? Maybe you and Derek should have a conversation. I mean, you could certainly talk in chat here all day, every day, even if I'm not broadcasting. And you could do so on Discord, on, on the, in the Table Talk section, or you can do so through a DM if you wanted to. Um, VTM is a very interesting system. Um, and yeah, Dark Wolf made RPG. Uh, it's a very anime setting, and uh, the players are different maids or butlers that have different powers. And uh, it's, I can get into it. <laughs> that, that'll be a whole segment for itself sometime. <laughs> Spicy Larry, random forest. Oh, Spicy's going into the woods again. What do we have? 2d20, 16, and 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. That's greater than the 10 he needed to take down the pair of treants. And so Spicy Larry has earned himself 200 EXP. Whoops. Did I... 
Did I just like type this on the character sheet somewhere? Did it just not go anywhere? There we go. Um. Hey, Peru, burnout is a real thing. How goes the night? Oh, actually, Peru, your presence here uh, does remind me that uh, I, I was going to do a little bit of housekeeping with you all. Um, and, and you're kind of the whipping boy for this, uh, Peru. In, in a good way. I, I'm saying that with a little tongue-in-cheek. Hey, awesome. Derek and Tycho making a good connection. And then Tycho, your friend, too. Uh, and Dark Wolf, if, if you're interested, I mean, you could look up stuff on the internet. I don't know. You might be able to find a PDF about it, but I have a physical book. Uh, so if you're interested, I could let you borrow it sometime if you and Kitty, uh, you and Kitty wanted to pour over it. Got to go do house things first before I invest in anything else. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tycho. Uh, it's okay. I was thinking maybe Saturday. No stream, no stress, except the stress the characters go under. Ask my player's basic feeding scene is something that shows how to, things can go south quickly. Yep. Remember, always lick the wound. Where were... Oh, we were on personality traits. Oh, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Ideals. Add points to Spicy Larry. 200. <laughs> Larry, this is your character, man. <laughs> He's invested in you. <laughs> the ideal <laughs> is three. Free, ooh, free thinking. Inquiry and curiosity are the pillars of progress. Well, he is chaotic. This is a chaotic-themed uh, ideal, and it, I think that still fits in with, with himself. In 3rd edition, if you were playing a monk, you had to be lawful of some kind, though a lot of those restrictions have fallen away as... The player, uh, the player meta has grown, ideas and cultural norms have grown, and uh, we go from there. Bonds, five. Should my discovery come to light? Ooh, it could bring ruin to the world. Ooh, 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 ooh. Speaking of spicy, this is getting spicy. Flaws, his flaw is number four. I let my need to win arguments overshadow oh friendships and harmony. I'm sure we could all think of friends or family who has that as a flaw, even if it's ourselves. What? Both of you are huge anime geeks? <laughs> it, it it's obvious and it's fine. Uh, you, you two would geek out if you saw my library. We will rule the galaxy, he and I, his father and son. <laughs> he is a little short to be a stormtrooper, isn't he, right? He's only two foot ten, uh, two foot ten, Spicy Larry. It's not a flaw. I already know I'm right. <laughs> that's right. How dare you say that's a flaw? <laughs> uh, it's... Uh... <laughs> one, of the, one of the memes that has, has kind of cropped up at my own table... Is uh, some of my players are very intense in uh, in role playing and uh, in their in their uh, their own just personalities, and so one of the things that's cropped up is when the when the characters agree, voices still go up, and it just comes down to I'm agreeing with you. They're both talking about the same thing, and then just to kind of like bleed off the a little bit of the tension slash non tension. There's like the you know on the on the table like the pounding fist, and yes, I'm agreeing. This is what we should do. <laughs> oh, good times with D and D. A hermit background assumes a contemplative sort of seclusion that allows room for study and prayer. If you want to play a rugged wilderness recluse who lives off the land while shunning the company of other people, look at the Outlander background. On the other hand, if you want to go in a more religious direction, the Acolyte might be what you're looking for. Or you could even be a charlatan, posing as a wise and holy person and letting the pious fools support you. <laughs> Alright, so we have a personality filled out. we got to think about whatever this discovery is. This is going to be something juicy. Now, of course, that's his own opinion, right? And and his opinion's correct by his flaw, but his opinion is if this if this discovery 
gets out into the light of day, this is gonna this is gonna ruin the world or upset the world or the balance of power in Mesotopia, kind of a thing. <clears throat> Pardon. The last anime I watched was the Saga of Tanya the Evil. It brought me great joy. Oh yeah, that's the um uh, that one is, uh, isn't it like a World War One and like this, this like really cruel soldier was reincarnated as a little girl and she's got like the, the duck lips all the time and she's got the blonde hair, blue eye kind of a thing. So you have kind of a, a cute, uh, cute girl, but she has this like vicious streak from a middle-aged like war commander or something like that. That's the idea. By the way, uh, here's the Discord. If any of you needed to hop in there, there's a lot of fun stuff aside from that. Uh, aside from that, in there, uh, just like the ability to chat. There's fun pictures, ideas, things along those lines. All right, let's go to races, halfling, and find out what we're looking for. <laughs> he is small. <laughs> we we have a, a little in here. Uh, da, 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 da. our run speed is 25 feet. We also get the lucky feature, which is very nice. You roll a one and suddenly it is most likely not a one, though it could always be again. We're also brave in the face of danger and we get halfling nimbleness. We can move through the space of any creature of a size that is larger than ours. We can also speak common and halfling. Being a light foot halfling, we increase our charisma by one. And we are also naturally stealthy. Now, remember, all of these, I'm putting these words down as placeholders. If any of you are new here, if you're lurking, or if you, even if you're uh, experienced and you forget, wh what does brave mean? What does halfling nimbleness mean? Make sure to let me know, and I'll happily go back and read the paragraph or discuss how something operates. Uh, we also got a, there's our, there's our two decks just kind of floating around. There we go. Those are our racial features. Oh, hello, little mouse. You're so cute. Collapse this. Come down to classes. Monk. We are level six. So we're going to get some abilities. Our proficiency bonus is three. Our martial arts. We're going to be punching with D6s. There we go. That'll be bludgeoning, so we're going to hit the little radio button down there. We will get key, and there will be a couple things that we do with that. Our unarmored movement comes into play, and at 6th level, we're getting an extra 15 feet of movement. So this is going to put our run speed up to 40. Japanese sociopathic businessman versus a quote-unquote god. That's your fundamental conflict in Tanya. Uh, Derek's tip of the day, if you shorthand your character sheet with just the titles, always write down the, yeah, always write down the book and page numbers for quicker reference. I do agree with that, Derek. Uh, that's something I personally do, and maybe I should encourage more of that uh, when we're filling out sheets here. Um, but uh, it's one way that I, I've kind of done it as a shorthand is if we see that these are racial features, we know that we can look under the race of halfling in order to get them. Um, especially, uh, spells, especially. Um, spells, I do recommend not just weaving like what level you got the spell, and if you put the name of the spell down, I do recommend putting the page number down too for easier reference. If you don't do something like print out spell cards. Uh, by the way, index cards are great for a spell book. Um, index cards came in really handy in 4th edition. Really, really handy. Anyway, I think I'm getting ahead of myself here. 
Uh, six level, uh, or proficiency bonus, martial arts. We have six key points. So we're going to put those here because on this modified sheet, uh, things like lay on hands, key points, and everything have a space for that reference. That way it's on the front page and it's a little easier to read. Uh, what else do we get? Key, unarmored movement. We get our monastic tradition. We are also going to get to deflect missiles. Or missiles, if you want. And we do get our ASI. We also get slow fall. At fifth, we get an extra attack and stunning strike. That's going to come under key. Key empowered strikes uh, make it so that our attacks are uh, magical as well. There we go. Because this will be uh, 1d6 plus whatever X is going to be. And so we're actually going to be dealing magical bludgeoning damage with our fists. <laughs> And we're going to get our monastic tradition. Okay. There we go. Uh, what do we have? Derek says, Ack, do not mention the blasphemous times of the fourth. What? What, Derek? Fourth was a... Uh, all right. I better be careful. I enjoy fourth edition. I definitely will play 5th edition all day, every day. I really enjoyed 4th edition as a DM and as a player. I really liked it. There, I said it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's go back up to our hit dice. We're level 6, uh, so we have uh, 6. We haven't used any yet. And we're rocking D8s as a monk. No armor proficiency, uh, because we are going to get uh, unarmored defense. Uh, no armor weapons, simple and short swords. Tools, yes, we do get uh, an artisan tool or a musical instrument. We'll put question marks as placeholders because that's a detail that will that'll flush out better at the end when we discover more about who he is and what he does. Saving throws are going to be strength and dex, so let's fill in the diamonds that are up here. Little radio buttons. Boom. There we go. Uh, skills. Choose two from acrobatics, athletics, history, insight, religion, and stealth. Hmm. Oh, shoot. I forgot to mark... Um, Forgot to mark what we get from our background. One second. Medicine and religion. That is religion is here. And medicine is here. And we're going to get a couple other things too. Ooh, tools. We are going to get herbalism kit as a tool proficiency. We are also going to get a language of our choice. So we can fill that in. And equipment, we're going to put some stuff in our backpack. Scroll case with notes. A winter blanket. Common clothes. We actually do get an herbalism kit, and we get five gold. There we go. Sorry about that. And I see that there's some chat. I, I'll catch up on that in just a second here. Let's go back to Monk real quick. Okay. Hey, at least you said it. Fourth edition fixed more things than it broke. Um, I do agree, Bob, because I like the fourth edition system. I thought it was a great chassis that scaled well. And it included epic adventures right from the beginning. <laughs> to be fair, I was almost assaulted over a discussion about Mage, as I like in the NWOD variant better. Oh, jeez. Talk about someone getting really passionate. 
I like to add if a spell is concentration, yet with a C, and if it's an action or a bonus action, when you don't have cards available or a book on hand. Yeah, if you also have, um, uh, if you get a spell sheet kind of like this, also that allows for that sort of thing, uh, it, does it require active concentration? Any does it have somatic, verbal? You can see the little pop-ups, right? Uh, somatic, verbal, or material components. And this way, uh, so on a, on a modified spell sheet like this, you can fill in the little radio buttons next to each in order to help sort out what is what. And you can see the breakdown up here too. If you if it's difficult seeing it on screen with all the blue fill-in boxes, if you look up here, you see your spells, spell casting class, and then it's huh, spelled out. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. And then you have a, a button to show if it's prepared, right? That's the big button, or then if it's a concentration. And sometimes you can also indicate if it's a ritual too. Or you can cast it as a ritual, I should say. Because you can cast a spell to take a slot, or you can cast it as a ritual, and it, uh, it doesn't necessarily. You make index cards? Yeah, Bobicus, uh, uh, printing cards is really good. Spicy Larry is getting spicier. He's going to go into the dungeon. Uh, you, Ooh, Poison Dart Trap. Uh, will you do it? Disadvantage. Two and a six. Oh, no. Spicy Larry takes a Poison Dart to the neck and goes down. Uh, Derek, you may not have enough EXP. Oh, no, actually, uh, Rand, it, you might have enough EXP, but there's a minute global cooldown on a dungeon. Though for Spicy Larry, he can't go back in the dungeon for five minutes because there's a pers there's a user cooldown time and a global. So if you see U or G down below in the description of the abilities, uh, that's what that means. Oh, I know, Spicy, it's tragic. <laughs> Um, if you want, we can, uh, drag you back to a temple and, uh, and give you a res. If you want, type in exclamation point R-E-Z-P-L-Z -E to try and get a res and we'll see what, uh, we'll see what happens. Now we choose two from acrobatics, athletics, history, insight, religion, and stealth. Hmm. Let's look at his personality again. <laughs> no, spicy. Don't let those be your last words. You're not going to die. Not here, not now. You'll make it through. Uh, uh, uh. Spicy Larry. All right, so we, we drag Spicy back to a temple, and unfortunately, we might not have had enough gold on hand for a complete raise dead. Uh, so we kind of get the we get it quick and dirty, and um, so you're you're back to life, but you are a male tiefling cleric. Um, you better you better scamper out of here before King Von Ale comes in, because uh, if he sees another tieflings running around, that could be a problem. <laughs> Dark Wolf was going to make a float, but someone stole all the vanilla ice cream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a goblin defibrillator kit. <laughs> and hey, Dark Wolf, you got a you have another uh, tail swisher. You have a responsibility to make sure that Spicy is uh, swishing responsibly. Two more skills. Here he, he has an intelligence in religion, and that is one that is offered by. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, religion is one. History, athletics, acrobatics, insight, religion, and stealth. Hmm. Acrobatics might be a good one. See, I don't know if he's necessarily sneaky, right? We have this monk, Way of the Four Elements. He's an older guy. He's been a hermit for a long time. He's been exiled. Um, he's a leader of his community. Uh, he studied. I don't, so he seems intelligent. So something, if he had something to say on every topic, that would point maybe to history. Free thinking. He is a thinker. 
Should my discovery come to light, it could ruin the world. What, what could these lead to? Maybe insight in religion would be good for him. Or uh, th did I say religion? I meant uh, insight in history. Uh, d there's nothing quite like coming home to hear my voice coming out of my basement. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I closed Chrome after the stream last night. What is this responsible tail swishing? I thought I thought a tail went whatever it wanted. You know, that, that's the sassy tail, right? You get that, that Z snap on your tail. Whatever, whatever, I'll swish where I want. I'll swish where I want. That's if Cartman was uh, doing it. But yeah, Dulcorin, uh, Spicy Larry took a poison dart to the neck, and uh, we we did kind of a, a quick res job on him, and uh, he came back as a male tiefling cleric. <laughs> Spicy Larry swishes tail without regard. <laughs> no, you're going to knock everything over. <laughs> he knows the true nature of ruling class. He found there is no god. Ah, the madness. Uh, so, uh, uh, Peru, um, as I'm filling in buttons and everything here, uh, I was, I was talking and I, I think that I want to make your, uh, your magic dagger, uh, BTTV icon. Um, as we're coming up into summer and some other things, I want to start introducing some art and icons that we can use that have been built out of the culture of the channel so far. And so we have, uh, we have the, the avocado, uh, the, the avocado nati. Like the the Illuminati, that's an avocado or a, or a guacanati. Um, we can make a hurdy gurdy, and I think making a magical dagger uh, would be fun and appropriate because you're always after that thing, and that thing just keeps on getting wrecked. Um, <clears throat> and so, if there's other if there's other things that we've developed as a culture in the channel that you would like to see as a little piece of art that we can do as an emote. Uh, let me know uh, on Discord or uh, in chat here, and I'll be happy to uh, to consider it, talk it out, and we can go from there. Derek goes into the dungeon. Oh no, it's an ooze. <laughs> Bobakus is meticulously unswishing now. <laughs> um, now right, you get a plus two modifier. Three. Oh, Derek. Um, so Derek, uh, well, this, uh, you've seen a lot of anime and we all know that oozes, uh, only, only consume certain fabrics or leathers. And so you yourself may not be dead, but you're in quite the compromising uh, position inside this dungeon. Hopefully someone can rush in and take care of you. It happens to the best of us, Derek. <laughs> Delcorin tosses Derek a phoenix down. Uh, speaking of uh, speaking of the deck of many things and uh, in Peru, uh, you get the vizier. Yeah, very nice. Hey, you don't have to res, Derek. Uh, resing is just a fun mini, like a mini thing that you can do on the side. But if you want some character creation inspiration, or you want to sort of role play through you falling in a dungeon, you can do a res, please, and we'll go from there. <laughs> Uh, what do we get? I got my darts. Unarmored defense. Okay, yep, we get their key. Oh, yeah, ours. Uh, we, we, gotta, we gotta fill in this stuff. Alright. Oh, hibbity-jibbity. Our dexterity should be high. Our wisdom should also be high, because those are two very important things to our character. Uh, we can probably give 15, 14... 13, he's older, we'll give him 10, he probably doesn't have a lot of strength, he's just very nimble and quick, and so his 12 is going to go in charisma. Now if we do that, that's going to pop his dex up to a 17, and that's going to pop his charisma to a 13, we can get rid of these placeholders. And that means on his first ASI at level 4, uh, we can pop his dex. We'll put 1 in dex, and we'll put 1 in charisma. He has skills and intelligence, and we'll put 1 in intelligence. There we go. Nice and easy. Look at that. 
That is going to give him, though, a minus one there. That's going to give him a four, a zero, two, two, one. Very nice. Sorry if I sound sniffly or whatever. I, there's the cats were in here. There's like, I don't, I don't know if I, I just have like cat hair on me because uh, I was jamming out with them a little earlier. Um. All right, uh, Derek does uh, take the option of a res, please. Hey, well, bubonic, bubonic one. We have a dragonborn now. Uh, so Derek comes back as a female dragonborn cleric. Seems good. Um, well, back to Dragonborn Cleric at Tiamat. Sounds good. And unfortunately, Derek doesn't have a tail, uh, unless you're that kind. King, oh, uh oh everyone watch out. King is here. Derek can just, uh, find some clothes from the Dark Wolf pile we keep around every time she ends up drawing the Void card. <laughs> yeah, fellow clerics. <laughs> Hope you like wolf fur skirts. <laughs> What it lacks in deflection, it makes up for in distraction. <laughs> uh, with this, we can put a 2 for saving throw and a minus 1 for athletics. Uh, then we have a 7 here. And 4, 4, 4. Saving throw is 0. Two, 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 two. Two twos. Five and a five. Two, 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 two. Five, five. One, 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 and one. Hmm. I almost wonder for the charisma. He's older. He was exiled. He's lived in exile and he's been a hermit. Maybe we should just swap strength and charisma and have charisma be his dump stat. If we did that, right, we have uh, we have our 18. Uh, this would have been a 9 because our 8 would come down here and the light foots get uh, plus 1 charisma. That would be 9, but that would still be a minus 1. And that would put our 12 up here in strength. And give a one, and that would be that would, might make a little bit more sense in this case. Four and four. Oh, not four. Four and one. There we go. That I think makes a little bit more sense for our character. Oh, Soraya's outfit is actually made out of bear fur. Ah, so she's not betraying her kin. <laughs> Derek says, "Well, give me a second to write this character up." Yeah, hey, uh, I, I'd love to see this kind of uh, this kind of character, Derek. Uh, Jam Jam checks and checking the EXP. Uh, you woke up in a dungeon with no memory of how you got there, or who you are, yet somehow uh, you know you have abilities. Jam Jam is spending the big bucks going into the Underdark. What? Oh no, it's an Alithid. Only a 16 or greater can defeat it. You attack with disadvantage, adding a plus five. Can you do it? Eight and twelve. Oh, unfortunately, Jam Jam. Bye bye brain. Your brain has been sucked out by the Alithid. Uh, it's going on to be a bigger, better brain, though. Um, very literally. And Jam Jam is asking for a res, please. You come back as a male human wizard. Hey, that's pretty good. Now we can fill in some of this stuff here. Our saves are 8 plus proficiency, so that's 11 plus wisdom modifier. So this is going to be a 13. There we go. Now, our key allows us to do a few different things. We have Flurry of Blows. We have Patient Defense. Step of the Wind. And we got Stunning Strike at a later level. But it kind of goes under a key point use. Now, being a Monk of the Four Elements, we're also going to be able to use our key points to fuel spells. Well... Spell-like abilities aren't really a thing, uh, but the, it conveys the what it is a little bit better, in my opinion. Um, actually... <laughs> wave the open hand. Wave shadow. Here we go. Wave the four elements. 
We learn magical disciplines that harness the power of the four elements. A discipline requires you to spend key points each time you use it. You know the elemental attunement discipline and one other elemental discipline of your choice, which are detailed below. Uh, we learn one additional discipline at 6, 11th. Okay, so we're going to get... Disciple of the Elements. Two, three, and one of those is... Um, Elemental Attunement. And we'll get to choose two more. Then it gets into casting elemental spells and how we can manipulate... Um, uh, we, how we can manipulate our spells using key points. There we go. Eh, whatever. Eh, we can put that someplace else. Anyway, so there, there's a bit of a chart. Uh, and then we get to choose where we want to go with this. What kind of spells would he take? Hmm. Some are level locked, by the way. Hi! Itchy! Itchy Uranium! Thank you for following along. Hopefully you've enjoyed the journey we're taking so far. A lot of great conversation going on. We have a, we're, we're pulling this random character out of the ethers and uh, giving him a purpose, a backstory. Um, but yeah, thanks for following. Feel free to join in on any of the chat games or the, the RP or quasi RP. You can ask questions or otherwise just be a part of our community. We're sitting around a table in a game store and that's exactly how we're having this kind of conversation. <laughs> Uh, so Jam Jam came back as... Oh, thank you, Dark Wolf. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Jam Jam came back as a male human wizard. And Delcorin, that does seem kind of familiar that you're a male dwarf wizard, so maybe you two can share your spell books together. Um, Derek is going into the dungeon. A bat swarm attacks. You, uh, you roll normally with a plus two. Seven plus two is nine. Oh, no. Derek... Attacked by a bat swarm. Jam Jam fell into that trap earlier in the dungeon. So, a black dragonborn cleric of Tiamat versus a bat swarm. Time to get drawing. <laughs> See, inspiration, it's all around us. <laughs> oh. Great energy tonight. This is awesome. Thank you all for, uh, for having fun and, and being a part of my evening, too. Hmm... Rush of the Gale Spirits. Gong of the Summit sounds really cool. You can spend three key points to cast Shatter. Shatter could be a fun spell. Especially against uh, especially against Constructs. Shape the Flowing River. Maybe we'll do something like that. Why don't we give him a little bit of variety? We'll give him Fist of Four Thunders. And as well, he will get um, Gong of the Summit. And that's the archetype there. Cool. All right, so we have a mechanical character, and there's a couple more things to fill in. We're going to be able to place him in our campaign world as well, a little bit more easily now that a lot of this is filled out. Um, real quick, his armor class is going to be 4 and 2. This is going to be 16. Initiative is going to be a plus 4. Passive Perception is going to be at 12. We can clear out these stats. He's earned his name. He is now a, a, he is a fleshed out character, so we can think of uh, something to put in there. Hit points. You get your full at level 1. And then we're going to add in 5 more levels of half plus 1, 
which is going to be five. Mm, pardon. Plus constitution modifier is zero. So that would be six times zero is zero. So we have eight plus 25. There we go. Nice and easy. Nice and easy algebra. We also do have to consider, um, do we want to give him an artisan tool of some kind or an instrument? What's nice is the other random characters that we've generated, um, by the way, I found some conceptual art that I think was fun, uh, do have tools that they can use also. He was given cartography tools. Uh, he was given blacksmith tools. And she has... Um, what did we give her? Oh, she has, um, uh, a, a proficiency with a disguise kit and a forgery kit. Yes, Bubonic, the bat swarm wins. Uh, thanks for the, uh, Itchy, thanks for the held with D&D. &D. Sorry, I couldn't make it earlier today. Uh, where'd you get the character build PDF? Um, that, I, I will share that as a link right here. This week, we're experimenting with this new type of sheet. We normally use the, the standard one, and the, there's a command uh, for it here. If you want a normal one, we'll do char sheet. That, that is a normal one. The, the link above that will take you over here, and that will bring you to this, uh, this modified one that we're using that has uh, the information rearranged a bit. And so we're, we're challenging ourselves to you know, go a little bit outside the norm. Um, so, sorry it took a second to get to your itchy uranium, but hey, uh, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming along. Sheds are number nine live D&D stream. Not bad, especially on a crit roll night. Hey, yeah. Uh, by the way, itchy, if you do want to join us, here's our discord too. And, uh, Shads are, thank you for letting me know in the, kind of the, in the ranking where we're standing. This is a great community, and I'm, I'm so happy to have uh, you all come out and build characters, uh, talk about your own experiences, and go from there. Peru, Shatter's a fun spell. Water Whip is a bonus action, so it's sweet to have as an elemental monk. I do agree. Uh, I think I think Water Whip is almost by default what <laughs> almost every uh, way the Four Elements monk uh, goes. And so it's sort of like, hey, we get a feat. Should we take Lucky? Yeah, but everyone takes Lucky as a feat. <laughs> so Water Whip is good. You are absolutely correct, Peru. Um, though, I don't know, maybe a challenge to be a little bit more flavorful is to go off the beaten path. That was my thinking anyway. If you really think that this person should have Water Whip, we can give him Water Whip. No problem. Top 10. Woo, says Dark Wolf. Crit Roll is tonight, isn't it? A uh, guy that used to be so much better than it is, says Bubonic. Uh, there's a bunch of links. Okay. Looks awesome. Hey, no problem, Itchy. Uh, come and jam out with us, ask questions, uh, tell your own stories. Uh, are you participating in a campaign currently? Are you running one? Are you playing in one? Uh, is it even D and D? Uh, we could talk world of darkness, you know, vampire, that sort of stuff. Um, there's pathfinder players. There's uh, old schoolers, uh, newbies. There's all sorts of people in here. Uh, you still like watching critical role? Yeah, no problem, Peru. Sorry, the check out refreshed. Could you put the, the sheet being used now? Oh, yeah. No problem, Larry. Here you go. That is a link to the... Uh, that's a link to the sheet that we're using right now. And it does also come with... If you want a little, like, uh, an instruction in what goes where just to help help your brain tell the difference. There you go. There you go. No problem, Larry. The least I can do for uh, for the Larry who gave his life uh, so that we could go further into the temple and uh, get a, get all the treasure and then say that your resurrection came out of your portion of the treasure. <laughs> uh, Itchy said, I tried to run one today at the house. I showed up with my wife last week to Wednesday. Th oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, gotcha, Uranium. Um, I, I, uh, I missed you guys. Uh, I missed you guys this session. We, we did a lot of cool stuff, but I'm glad that you had the inspiration to try and, uh, to try and run it at the house. Uh, if you do join us on discord, um, 
we uh, the the Wednesday and Thursday games have been giving getting an adventure diary in their own section, and you can read what's happened. Fallen Diamonds, aka Rico, it is going very well tonight. Thank you for dropping by and, and visiting us. We're doing a lot of cool stuff in here, Diamonds, uh, if I can call you that. If you prefer Fallen or even Rico, um, then uh, let me know. We have uh, we have a random character number four of five that we're building. Here's the other ones that we made earlier in the week. Uh, we're story. We're building a backstory. We're all of this is building up to a campaign. A uh, lot of story stuff going on. Uh, earlier, if you check the schedule down below, you see we, we do map making. We do PC advice, and that's what we're going to be doing next uh, after a short break here. Um, we can answer questions. You can share your own stories from either side of the DM screen, or if you play in other systems. Uh, if you want to know what's happening up here at any point in time, please ask. This is open. This is friendly. This is a bunch of nerds hanging out in a game store around a table effectively and uh, and go from there. Uh, Derek says, loose sketches on Discord. That's what I'll be refining. Okay, I'll put that up when we come back from break because I have another sketch. One of my Thursday players for Curse of Strahd sketched out her character and I was going to show that off too. King says I'd wear some bear fur. Derek, see if I can get this character finished by the end of the night. Okay. Yeah, If for anyone who's curious, uh, who wasn't here or don't know, uh, Derek unfortunately died in a dungeon, and we kind of got him a speedy and cheap uh, resurrection. Uh, it was more of a reincarnation, and uh, he didn't come back as he died. But he's making the best of it, and he's now illustrating his character fighting off a bat swarm. <laughs> Uh, Rico says, that's fine, man. Whatever. I just seen you streaming and I haven't played D&D in years. Was wondering what your channel is all about. Well, you got a, you got a good summary so far. Um, you're getting, we, we do lessons, tutorials, we build characters, we build stories, DM advice, PC advice. There's a bunch of fun games that you can play in chat too. Uh, this is meant to be a very, uh, a very uh, open but directed stream as we make progress we make friends with each other we're we're in this to tell stories and to be better role players uh, so if you have any questions you want to share uh, some old war stories uh, Rico please feel free to do so I love I love hearing about other people's experiences even if it's uh, conflict uh, like conflict or something bad has happened maybe we can help resolve it or there's a lot of us that can really just kind of commiserate and say oh my gosh Yes, that happened. That happened to me too. Solidarity. <laughs> Salty, thank you so much for following. I really appreciate it. That means a lot to me that you guys are coming aboard, you're you're interested, you're curious, and you want to be a part of the fun and creativity and positivity that we have going on right now. We are all born storytellers as human beings. This is our special gift. We need to develop that. That is the whole point of what we're doing here. Spicy Larry is going on an adventure in the plains, a nearing Russell. A rabbit? Jumping from the grass is a null pack. Only a nine or greater can defeat it. You attack normally, adding a plus two modifier. It's worth 100 experience points if defeated. Spicy Larry rolls 1d20. You roll, it stops on 14, plus two is 16. The null pack is taken out by Spicy Larry, and he wins. Add points. Spicy Larry. 100. There you go. Good job. <laughs> Shads are risking a lot in battle, fighting a random monster. He bets 1720 of his own experience and wins. Oh, Shads are nice. Note Sarai did not wrestle a bear for her clothes. <laughs> uh, Delcorn, just don't trash talk avocado. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's uh, we're all part of the, the guacanati here. Uh, <laughs> Woo. I love the good vibes you're putting out. Well, thank you, Salty. Uh, that's it's it's all organic, homegrown. This is a place to come where you're not going to find uh, contrived positivity or superficial stuff. We're storytellers. We're we're sharing our own experiences, good or bad, um, and we come from all different walks of life. And that's that's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> Frisha Vacado aren't they the packaging for golf balls? I'm, I don't know what you're talking about, Shadzar. 
Spicy Larry, I am the spiciest of Larrys. How can I add you on Discord? If you follow this link, if you follow that link, Itchy Uranium, um, you can you can find the channel. Uh, Rico says, okay, cool. Yeah, I was wondering where you get your material sheet because I was thinking about trying to pick up some stuff and find a group and maybe play sometime. It's just hard with your... Oh, gotcha. Um, well, uh, there are others here, uh, whether through it's this channel or Discord, that if you have some, some schedules that open up, you guys might be able to find a, uh, a Roll20 table together. At some point in time, I will do a broadcast game, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, though, if you do need character sheets, uh, you can follow uh, the one that we're experimenting with here. Uh, the one we're experimenting with here, Rico, is at this location. And then you can also, if you want the official PDFs, you can also go there. And all of you can find resources uh, there to help you out. Um, mm -hmm. Dark Wolf, KOP just came up to me, looked straight in the eye and said, Ah, oh, just realized she cursed in a church. <laughs> I suppose so. Uh, Shadzar, not a storyteller, plays D&D, not Wad. Well, yeah, that, that's the very literal uh, interpretation of it, isn't it? Itchy says, um, you're on the channel trying to add me as a friend. Oh, okay, I, I think I need to do that on my end. Uh, I don't have that up just yet, Uranium. Um, I do not know the Vine meme. I, I guess I don't know the Vine meme, Shadzar. Um, Bear would just be a nice change for my tiefling wardrobe. Yeah, by the way, any of you tieflings, halflings, or gnomes out there, uh, King is, uh, King is, uh, not approving of, uh, you living in his kingdom. And he will, uh, gently encourage you to leave. You would have to watch YouTube for Vine fresh of, uh, Vokado. Okay. Well, I will copy and paste this into a browser tab, and I will take a look at it. I will take a look at it. Okay. <laughs> I'll laugh my butt off. Uh, from all the tieflings I've poached, yeah. Spicy Larry, I'm hiding in a bush from the monsters. <laughs> it sheds our... <laughs> That's a very nice everything you've got there. It'd be a shame if something were to happen to it. <laughs> uh, Peru is drawing from the deck of many things. The Fool! You lose a level, discard this card, and draw from the deck again, counting both draws as one of your declareds. Uh, so, Peru... There's a replacement EXP so you can draw again from the deck. Oh, you're also... Yeah, that's right. You're hiding in the bush from King. Uh, yeah, yeah, you did kind of res back as a tiefling. Oh, you've heard of the, the avocado but never knew where it came from. Hey, so sheds are the meme spreads throughout the channel. It was a vine. <laughs> oh, I think we have this character mostly buttoned up. I got to fill in a couple more things. Martial arts, uh, you know, the, the plus of the hit. That's That's all relatively easy stuff to do, though. I'm going to get up and take a break. I'm going to uh, stretch. Uh, I might fix a snack. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to have some salsa tonight. I had some really good uh, I had some really good dinner not too long ago before broadcasting. So the salsa might be safe tonight as well as the guacamole. <laughs> uh, so, all right. Uh, you guys continue doing what you're doing in chat. I, I'll be... I won't necessarily be AFK, but I'm going to mute the mic and, and go off screen you know, five, ten minutes, I'm going to get up and stretch and do all that, and then I'll come back, and we're going to talk about uh, some of the finer details of our characters, like encumbrance, jumping distance, that kind of a thing. Uh, real quick, before I go, before I get up and go, get up and go. Spicy Larry is getting sassy and going to the forest, a troll pops out. You need a ten or greater with a plus two. Um, Nineteen and five. Oh, five plus two is seven. Unfortunately, Spicy Larry falls to the troll. <laughs> it's a Minecraft creeper. Punch trees. Come out. Forget the salsa. Go for cherry cheesecake. Hey, you know what, Shadzar? If I had some cherry cheesecake... 
Um, I would definitely, I would nom on that. Force and planes are back to their old evil ways. <laughs> Spicy Larry, not again! Del Corn going into the planes. Uh, what do we have? A bandit gang pops out. You need a nine or greater with a plus one. Oh, Del Corn dispatches the bandits and earns 50 EXP. Spicy Larry goes for the res, please. You come back as a male human sorcerer. Hey, you and Jam can sit down and compare different magic styles. And even with Del Corin. Oh, it's a... Um, uh, it's a minute global cooldown, Shadzar, for planes. Uh, okay, I'm going to mute the mic and get up, and then I will be back in just a tad. You've got mail.
Okay. Oh, I will be coming back on the screen here in just a little bit. Hopefully you all got up. Maybe you made some tea, got another beverage, did a little stretch. If you have a cat or dog, uh, you, you gave him a pet. All the good stuff in life. Uh, what did I miss? What did I miss? Things and stuff. Um, <laughs> Derek wishes he could speed paint. Uh, Shadzar didn't quite make it. Uh, I don't have random planes in that regard. Shedzer says, I'll make it a map tool where it's better control and design and coding. LUA is just... Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, Shadzar. Uh, I'm glad Bubonic knows. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, you two are having a conversation about uh, some virtual tabletops. Oh, Fantasy Grounds. FG, is that probably what that stands for? Tabletop Simulator allows for making board games... Ah. Yeah, Fantasy Grounds is for D20 RPGs. Yeah, uh, if, if anyone hasn't been able to pick up, Shadzar does uh, enjoy uh, gaming of many varieties, and uh, he also does... Uh, he does programming and some other things along those lines. I know I'm, I'm probably way understating the, your hobbies and your interests, Shad's are, but uh, bear with me on that. I'm trying to catch up. Dynamic lighting is... Uh, I, I enjoy dynamic lighting in Roll20. I already have TTS, and I was shocked when, when I saw the cost of FG compared to the free Roll20, so I said, nay, nay. Raid Dungeon had batteries and a red board for walls. Alright, so I see Larry's going into the plains. Is it a rabbit? Only an eight or greater can defeat it. Does Spicy Larry do it? No, Larry, a null pack. Nom, 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 nom. Derek is posting an update. Okay, so I'll, I'll put that up on, on the channel here when we come back. Delcorn is looking for random tracts of land. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's see. We have character art. There we go. I'll bring this over here. And we'll go live. Bing -a -ding. Hi, I'm back. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> stranger, stranger. <laughs> what are you buying? What are you selling? I'll buy it at a high price. <laughs> oh, let's get some background music going. <laughs> 